Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to talk about all this white stuff that we see on our terracotta planters, what it is and how we could get rid of it. So as many of you already know, one of the most common planters that we have are terracotta pots. And this is what terracotta generally looks like. You get it, it's nice and orange, and this is made out of clay. And this clay happens to be porous. And what I like about terracotta is the fact that it is actually porous. But what that means is that water can move freely in and out of the planter pot. But when that happens, if we have hard water or fertilizer salts or calcium in our water, then that will actually, the water will evaporate and that rest of the salts will be left behind, which leaves you with this white powdery substance or this kind of like rime along the edges of your planter pot. Now, some people will say, oh, I like that. It looks like this aged planter pot, but this is not truly aged terracotta. As a matter of fact, something that is more aged could look like this. This is a high fired planter pot and this one is also aged but it's a low fired terracotta planter. And what I mean by that is essentially this is uh, fired at a higher temperature so it's more stable. And this one is a lower temperature. And so I genuinely like to go with the high fired planter pots because they are um, less likely to disintegrate. If you've ever bought one of these aged ones that are low fired, they will literally disintegrate sometimes in two or three years. I had another one that basically just broke. And it could look cool, you know, it's very shabby chic, it's very charming, but um, they're really not that stable. I just planted this guy up in here and I've had this for probably three or four years. This is an asparagus fern that was left to me by my friend Massimo and he was moving his home and, um, and he just left it behind with me. So now it's mine and you can see that it's, uh, it's growing very well. But over time as I water this, this planter will probably definitely disintegrate. So now you know that these calcium deposits are not a sign of aging, but it is a sign of mineral buildup in your planter pot. Now, is this actually damaging to plants? If your plant does actually touch some of those deposits along the edge, it can technically burn the leaf of your plant. So, you know, in this case, I wouldn't be too worried about it because this one's actually, you know, going this way. And this one, there's no leaf that's touching this uh, planter pot right now. So that's not a big deal. But if you have one that's kind of flopping over um, and touching a little bit more of that mineral residue, then I would just be a little bit more mindful of it. So what you want to do is when you start to see this white buildup on your planter pot, you're going to want to remove it, especially if it's around these like edges right here. Now, how can you remove this? Sometimes you could just take water. You could take an old toothbrush. Sometimes I'll get a Brillo pad and you could just work this away with even just water. Uh, if you wanna do a dilute vinegar solution, so you get some white vinegar in with water, so I made four parts water, one part vinegar if you even wanna do, and just try to take that off in the sink. You also see some of this kind of gook right here. I'm actually not quite sure what this is. This is a really old planter of mine, but I would say this could be sap from a plant or it could be a sign that there was maybe some type of plant sucking insect, like a scale for instance, and this is maybe some of the honeydew that kind of dropped down. It could be an, any number of things, but. I have actually tried to clean this off at one point, but you really need to, to get some muscle in there and kind of uh, scrape that off. But again, you know, old planters over time kind of build up a little bit more character. And don't worry if you can't get all of the mineral deposits off of this or all of the scars, the, the battle wounds over time, because uh, you know, the, pl the planter pot doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be good enough in order to be able to plant up a new plant in it. And typically when I have these plants and I move my plants out and I see this, I will just start to clean them up in order to move the next plant in there. And that's usually good housekeeping anyway, because if there is any kind of disease agents or bacteria buildup in the planter pot, you're going to want to clean it out for the, for the next plant. So you could see again on my philodendron here, 
I have this with bottom watering. So I don't usually water from the top. I water from the bottom and you'll see that as the water was evaporating, it was leaving these minerals behind because they're heavy and they just build up on this outside of the terracotta pot. Now you could use like rainwater or distilled water and flush this out, but as you're flushing the salts out, you're probably not going to flush this um, outside mineral deposit off. So that is what you're going to have to do is just kind of scrub it. Now you could remove the plant and put it into a temporary planter or a new planter and wash it, or you could wash it while the plant is in there, you know, again, just with a bristle brush or a toothbrush to get that off. But otherwise, that's it. It's nothing too complex. It's not going to really harm your plants if your plants are not touching it, but it's good form in order to be able to get rid of some of those deposits over time. Don't want that to build up in your planter pot. So I hope that was helpful to you. Let me know if you have any other questions, just put them in the comments below. If you didn't hear yet, we just released Houseplant Basics, which is an introductory mini course for beginner houseplant enthusiasts. The video-based course is set up to be both concise and comprehensive, and it serves as a perfect primer for our Houseplant Masterclass, which is a month-long course on houseplant care, cultivation, and more. You can find out more information on both courses at homesteadbrooklyn.com or search for the courses in the description below.